So hi and welcome to another video and today we're going to be checking out the core pads on the Superlight and deciding whether you should or shouldn't change your current skates on your Superlight Jibra wireless. Now in this video we're going to go over four areas, we're going to go over the general skate information, so like thickness, weight, what they're made of, price, and then we're going to go into a force test to see how much force you need to push the mouse across the pad. We're going to go into a static friction test to see what the friction is on the skates as well, to see how quickly you can move them micro adjustments and then I'll give my general opinion on whether you should or shouldn't be changing these whether you should invest in some new skates so I'll just run you through a few things we'll show you how to install the skates two things to notice on these is I've tried a hairdryer and you can see here I'm using zipper lighter fluid and neither of them are going to take these skates off very easily these skates ripple at the front and you'll destroy them taking them off so if you're not familiar I also have a twitch channel and tonight I'll be doing a Rocap first pro test I'll be using it throughout the whole stream while I play Call of Duty I'm just giving my general opinion on it. So if you're interested in that, come and check out me at Twitch Bearded Bob. I do all kinds of mice tests on there, mouse pads. Just give my opinion if you want to find out quickly, because it takes me a while to get some of these videos out. So another thing to note is Core Pads have released a version two of these skates, which I've just seen. And I've got some of those on the way. These are the version one, these are the original ones. So there might be some changes in the version two, and we'll find those out as we go through here. If there's any problems with these Core Pad skates that would make them want to make a version two. On top of that also, iTac Tech has sent me out the Tiger Ice versions of these Superlight skates and I'll be using those as well and doing a test so we can compare all these skates together in one place over the charts, make it very easy for you to decide if you should or shouldn't upgrade these skates. So let's take a look at the general info on these skates. So the liftoff distance on the G Pro Wireless is below 1 dVD. So as you can see, the measurements are absolutely everywhere here on these core pads. The 0.6 to all the way up to one millimeter. I've given 0.8 as the in-between one that I've used as my measurement here. But as you can see, they're so inconsistent. Don't know whoever released these without measuring them, but oh dear. One thing to note here, and this is one of the first things I've noticed, is the dot on the core pads measures in at 0.6 millimeters, which actually makes it thinner than the rear skate on the core pads, which means that it doesn't touch the pad which means we're not going to do any tests with the dot here. We'll have to do that on the version twos because this dot on the core pads is useless. You can clearly tell they've rushed it out here and it's not even the right measurement. So that's not a good sign here from core pads. They're both made out of PTFE. The core pads are £7.50 UK pounds to buy. For those in euros and around £11 shipped, you get two sets. For me, one of the best improvements on the core pads over the stock skates is the rounded edges. Stock skates have flat edges. Core pads do have round edges, which is good because of that massive flat front piece on the cheaper wire super light front skate. Weight wise, the core pads come in at 0.8 grams heavier, so nearly a gram. These were weighed with the dots on as well. So I said that the first problem we encountered is the dot on the core pads. It's not good. Don't use it, waste of your time. But just add an extra gram of weight to your mouse until maybe they've adjusted it on the new version twos. So I said all tests are done without the dot on. And let's start off with the flat test here. This is the force test and the average NSW for core pad was 18 grams. Stock was 18 grams. Let's make some identical here. Core pads NFW 22 grams, stock 22 grams. Again, the same glide force here required for both. The RSW on the core pads was 15 grams. The stock was 23 grams. So quite a big difference there. On the core RFW 16 grams and the stock was 24 grams. Again, a big difference here. So bringing up the averages here, which is what we're interested in, the core pad average was 19 grams of force required, and the stock was 23 grams of force. So it does look to be that the core pads here are faster, with slightly less control over the stock skates here. So getting into the angle test, and this tests the static friction of the pads here, so how much do they stick? And the core pads on the NSW are 11 degrees before they let go, and the stock skates are 9 degrees before they let go. That means the stocks are slightly easier to get off the pad here. There's not as much static holding them back. The core NFW is 11 degrees and the stock 10 degrees. Again, the stocks are slightly easier to release. The RSW is 8 degrees on the core pads and 7 degrees on the stock pads. Again, following that trend of the stocks being a bit easier. And the core RFW is 8 degrees on the stock 7 degrees, continuing the stock trend of being easier to move. So looking at the averages here for core pads, they come in at 10 degrees and the stock 9 degrees, which we've guessed already which means the stocks have less friction here, making them easier to start and do micro adjustments. So what does all this mean, in my opinion, included in this? Well, for one, I certainly wouldn't buy the v V1 core pads at the minute. It looks like to me they have rushed them out, and the dot is clearly a problem with that. I'd also wait until the V2s have been checked to see how they stack up against the stock pads or even the Tiger Ice, which I'll be reviewing, as I've said, they'll be next for this. 
The stock ones do have less friction. Like I said, they've been better for micro adjustments and slightly smoother to move around. But there's a small difference that you probably wouldn't even notice that. The main difference potentially is the speed of the core pads. Although when using them for me, I didn't really find them to be much quicker on my MPC 450, which is my daily pad. The rounded edges though is definitely a bonus here on the core pads, which is good to see. I don't know why Logitech still refused to do this. And that massive front flat line on the uh, super light is certainly a problem on the stock skates, especially at the start. It does smooth out a little bit as you go on, but at the start is horrendous. So the core pads here hopefully will fix that if you're not enjoying that flat surface. So let's see what the next video does. I've done loads of videos on these, even on the stock G-Pro wireless. Go check that out. I've done a lot of videos for hyperglides, core pads, hotlines. My G-Pro wireless review will be coming out very soon, hopefully next week. I'm hoping to get it out now. I've done all this detail. I've also done videos showing you the wear on the G-Pro Superlight. All this will be included in that overview. Now I've been using it for a few months. So I'll catch you soon. See you later. Bye-bye.